Hey guys, what's going on? So I have an 06 Ford Explorer. I'm gonna replace the wheel head bearings in it. They're starting to make a little noise. And uh, the truck has $140 on it. It's a pretty popular thing that have happened on these. Um, this, uh, this repair should fit an 02-ish to like a 2010 Ford Explorer. So we're gonna hop into this, but before we do, remember if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you have any questions, leave a comment. We'll reply back to you. All right, so we lifted the hood on it and we're gonna change the spindle hub bearings on this. So the first thing that we wanna do, because we're gonna put it up in the air, is we'll disconnect the speed sensors from the harness up here. And the sensor runs and it's fastened into a little clip over here, which this one's already off for some reason. So we're gonna squeeze the little push tab and disconnect the sensor. And then we'll go over to the next side, the other side. Okay, I'll just feed this over to here and let's go over to get the next one. The one's on this side and it has this bracket on it right here, which sometimes you have to pry up with the screwdriver. Sometimes you can get it with your hand. And this one's got a tie wrap that's tie wrap this thing tight together for some reason. Normally that it, it doesn't have that. And here's the connector over here. We'll squeeze the connector and we'll unplug this side. Now when we go underneath, we won't have to do that. You wanna make sure that you follow the routing on this and make sure that you put this back onto the, the two bolts for your um, strut here. This is the top of the strut that the bolts sit on because you don't want this thing to rub, this cable to rub on anything and then you'll end up with an ABS light. All right, so we have this disconnector right now. We're gonna put the vehicle up and then we'll take the wheels off. So we're doing the spindle bearing on this side and I like to take the tie rod end off um, so I have full access to turning the wheel. We're going to take this tie rod end off and then we're actually changing it like we did on the other side on a different video. So we're gonna take this off, change the tie rod, we're gonna let it hang and we're gonna go ahead and do the spindle hub bearing. So we're gonna take this off here, and we'll get the hammer and separate this. separated and disconnect the speed sensor here that we already disconnected up top we're going to take all the clips off here you got one 5 16 bolt a couple of clips get in here with a screwdriver separate these this one comes out this one pops out of here these new clips come on the new thing on the new spindle hub there you got one 5 16th bolt here. Crack that loose. We'll never see this going back in. And we're gonna take the caliper off. By having the tie rod off, I can swing everything fully this way. I can get in the back with the impact. We're gonna take the bolts off here and take the whole caliper in slide bar assembly off and then we're going to um, fasten it to the spindle here um, with a bungee cord or up to the control arm so we can remove the rotor and then we're at the bearing so we got a 22 millimeter socket yeah we're going to take the the bar off for the caliper bar And we're gonna just grab the caliper, give it a little bit of a twist so that, you know, it's gonna give us a little room to slide this thing off. And we gotta find a home for this. We're gonna secure it up to the top here or somewhere, but we have to get this caliper so that it's secure and it's not gonna fall on our noodles here. So let me get a bungee cord and we're gonna secure that while we're in here dealing with this. Kind of work for us. 
the spindle hub bearing that we're changing. We're going to spray some penetrating oil. We're going to take this jam nut off here. We're going to push the axle in. And then on the back side of the spindle here, we have three, I think they're 15, so we're going to let you know what size these are here. And then we can press the bearing off. Now the sensor is part of the new spindle hub bearing here. And we're going to have to separate this part right here from the actual spindle. And usually you bang it with a hammer or sometimes you have to get an air chisel in there to wedge it. So, um, and then we'll, we'll take this apart now. We're using a 32 millimeter socket. Take this off. bearings overheat and collapse, sometimes the axle turns orange because the bearing turns orange and it'll heat up and kind of seize it in there. And this one's moving. This one's moving out of the way. We put the knot on so we won't damage the threads on the axle when we're tapping on it. So now we know this one's moving, we're going to take it off. Now we can go after the bolts on the spindle hub and then separate the bearing. <laughs> 15 millimeter. Let's see if we can stop pulling these off. some of these bolts from the front side here to get a little lube on them. We got the bolts that are sticking through here a little bit. We can spray these with penetrating oil. We get the one over here. All right, so by disconnecting that tie rod, we have full swing now. We got the 15 millimeter with a little swivel extension on here. Wobbly extension, I should say. some torque with the wobbly extension but it's coming off you can take these off by hand with the wrench I've had to do them that way so uh, but fortunately we got the gun so you gotta watch out so you don't catch your boot like I just did I didn't damage it but the other socket started catching the boot there you want to make sure you don't do that you could have forced this clamp right off so Okay, now tap the axle again, make sure it's moving in there. Now oh, here's what we find out, is it easy or hard? <laughs> so, we had a Chevy the other day though, it was a complete nightmare to get the, it was really yeah. bad. See if we can get it to split.
it goes. When my father yelling at us in the shop, don't tap it, hit the thing. Okay, so now, <laughs> see how it's orange on the axle? Yep. That's an indication that this bearing has failed. So you don't have to have a loose wheel bearing by jacking it up and getting play in it for it to be bad. So we had noise on this bearing when we were driving down the road. And as you turn into corners, you can hear when the truck leans, you can hear the pressure going on the bearing and it gets louder. And that was due to this bearing here. So we're gonna clean this mating surface up. I like to run a hand file across it flat to make sure that it's sealed up. Um, to make sure that it's flat, get all the shit off of it. And then we're gonna get some sandpaper and clean the inside of this. Um, and then we're gonna never seize it. We're gonna clean our axle up, never seize that. Everything will slide together nice and clean. Now just removing the old... Yeah, I just like to get it nice and clean, flat surface. You know I'm going to have a good mating surface. Now this thing had some silicone on it, which is not the norm. So I think, you know, at some point this bearing could have been changed. And it's very important that when you um, put this thing together, at the very end, that you torque the bearing. If you don't torque the bearing, you will shorten the life of the bearing so yeah that axle hub nut so what happens a lot of times is people crank down on the axle hub the axle nut and they over torque the thing and then they kill the longevity of the bearing right yep exactly so you gotta torque that we'll show you how to do it yeah we'll give you the torque spec on it and all right that's pretty clean there we're gonna never seize our bolts. We're gonna sandpaper the inside of this, never seize it, never seize our bolts, and get the new bearing on. There's a little holder right here that when we put the bearing in place, the harness clipped in, in, in there, and then we can start routing it. Um, so, but we wanna get all this debris right here, you know, out of here, so that our bearing slides in there nice and easy. Right, why now, if you're gonna keep this vehicle for a long time, you're not going to put one bearing in it, and that'll be the end of it. I can pretty much guarantee that. So if you never see this thing, the next time you go in there, it's going to be a hell of a lot easier for you. Usually when you do these hub uh, bearing assemblies, it's good to do them in pairs. I just bought this truck, and somebody already did the other one. They cheaped out and didn't do this one. So the other one seems to be good. So that's why we're only doing one in this video. Right, Steve? Yeah, the other one, the other bearing's brand new. You can see from the front of the spindle hub, when you look at the front of the spindle hub here, see how rusty and old this one is right here? And look at the one that's on here. It's nice and shiny. So you know this spindle hub has been replaced recently. And you can see that this one has, you know, been on for a long time. Okay, I've got less than five minutes worth of prep work here to make sure this thing goes together nice and clean. And it's well worth it. If you don't have sandpaper, you can use like a wire brush if you have one of yeah, those. Yeah, you can use a scuffy pad. You're just trying to get the rust and, and crust out of there. Okay, have to do that one. That sees it. We're gonna never seize this axle shaft so that the bearing is gonna slide on nice and easy. <clears throat> I'm a big proponent of never seize. You know, you're gonna go back in there at some point if someone else is, and it just makes the job a hell of a lot easier. So. This is copper, never sees. It doesn't have a, the highest heat range like uh, the silver one does, but 
the silver is more expensive and this is gonna suit our needs for the job that we're doing here at task. So. All right, so we've got everything covered with never see is we're gonna do our bolts and we can sit our bolts in place. Just get them so that they're started a little bit. Place the spindle bearing in place. We want to start all of these by hand. Make sure that they start correctly and straight. And we're going to tighten them in an even pattern and suck the bearing in evenly. So Steve and I have been using this brand for a little bit. They're um SKP. Yeah, SKPs. Uh, we got them from Rock Auto. Pretty good deal. I think they were like 50 bucks a piece. We've had good luck with them. Yeah. Like, kind of like an economy wheel bearing, but we put them on quite a few cars and uh, we've had good luck with them. We've used the Duragos as well. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not the fact that you're going to pay more for the bearing and you're going to get a lot longer life out of it. If you install it properly and torque it, this is a wearable item. Depending on how you drive and how hard you are in the vehicle and the condition of the roads, these are going to wear out. So you can spend a lot of money for one or you can, you know, spend on the cheap for one. So we try to go above the economy a little bit and, you know, get something. But uh, we've had good luck with these. So this is what we're going with. And now that it's all metaseized and everything, God forbid, if you have, ever have to go back in there again, it's going to come apart smooth. So if you torque the baron properly, and put it together right, you're gonna get longevity out of it. All right, so this is positional because of the sensor and it's gonna clock into this thing here. So we're gonna slide this into the axle and I like to just catch the nut just so that it's not gonna fall. So now you know it ain't going anywhere. It's not like you ever had that happen. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's never seized, so this thing's gonna fall into place nice. And we're gonna try and catch our bolts by hand. And these are 15s. Make sure I get them caught. I'm start them by hand with the socket. And I know they're caught. If I push in the axle back a little bit with the palm like I just did, it gives you some wiggle room to get the socket in there. So this one started. I gotta get this one started. But by pushing, see that? So now I can get the socket on there a little easier. starting to suck in now. Okay. I have a, um, a deep socket and a ratchet that I'm gonna, eight, three H ratchet that I'm gonna get to, to just suck these down. I could suck them down with the gun. Uh, I like the ratchet to do a little better.
So that's sucked in nice and smooth. It's my Como ratchet that we had another video that exploded on us. Remember that one? <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're just going to zip them with the gun. You can tighten these by hand if you decide. Make sure that they're tight. this back into here lock that into there and this goes up and our bracket goes into place like such Got a little bolt put a little nemesis on that this goes up into place like this Second hand of that. connect the top from underneath the hood. This, this, up. this fits onto the shock strut up there. And okay, so we are ready to put our rotor back on. We're gonna run this nut down, but not tighten it. It's all nut free, so it should run down nice and easy. We can um, get our rotor on. We're going to never see this around the plate here. And then we're going to put the rotor on and our caliper and bar back on. Last thing we're going to do is when we sit this thing on the ground, we're going to torque this with the torque wrench and Tony will look up the spec for the bearing. A lot of times when you buy the bearings, on rock all, they will give you the torque spec. So we gotta look at the flex hose here, okay? Make sure there's no cracks in it, it looks good. And we're making sure we're putting it on the same way that we took it off. Sometimes it's easier to slip a, um, a lug nut onto the rotor to get this thing to go on.
tighten these up. Okay, now on the front side up here, we have one clip left to put in. Yeah, one clip left to put in here. Okay. Now this is not rubbing against anything. It's the way you want it. You guys all have phones, take a picture of it to make sure it's routed properly. Or you can look at the other side. We're gonna, this end here, like I said, we're gonna put it on top of the strut tower as we go up underneath the hood and plug that back in. And, uh, so right now we'll put a little number seeds on the lugs and we'll put our tie rod on. This is a replacement tie rod, so it has a, has a tassel nut with a trotter pin. So we'll put that on. So we're gonna tighten this up with the seven eighths. It's a little loose, but Just as it stops tightening, now we use the wrench. We're gonna find out where our cotter pin hole is right there, so we wanna snug this up. You don't have to kill this thing. All right, we're gonna grease this one up and then we're gonna check our toe in on this because we did do a tie rod hey. on both sides. Get enough grease in it so we see the boot expand a little. Okay, boot's got some push to it now. We're good. So, tie it around. So we have our harness that's coming up here, and here's our plug, the connector, and the plastic clip that locks onto the strut assembly here. Push that down on there. penetrating oil on so we'll get down a little easier and here's the end of our plug as it routes up here we can plug it back into the connector which is locked into the clip here and we just heard it click and that's how this thing is just kind of floating around in here so it's in the clip, it's locked onto the thing here. You know, if you, you know, we could, uh, the other one was looped and tie wrapped and coiled, and I'm not sure I want to go that route with it, but we could do a little, little thing right here, which is going to make it look a little cleaner. We're probably going to tie wrap it to the vent hose for the canister right there. The sensor wire was a little long, so we just put a little loop in it, tie wrapped it. So there's no, nothing's rubbing, tie wrapped it to the uh, emission hose here. And um, it's locked into the bolts here for the top of the struts and nothing's gonna rub. And that's what you're looking for here, so. All right, so we're gonna torque the wheel right now and that should be the end. So I looked up the torque specs and it's 184 pounds. 184. And we're gonna pop the cap off of the center of the wheel. Normally we do that when the wheel's off, but we forgot. So 
not a big deal. Now remember, we didn't tighten this all the way down with the gun because we want to make sure that we get the torque correct on it. So we ran it down most of the way with the gun. Now we're going to tighten it down with the torque wrench. Stores rent torque wrenches. If you don't have one, make sure you torque that because you're going to shorten the life of that barren if you don't. Yeah, don't run it down with an impact gun. I hope you guys liked the video. If you have any questions, leave a comment. I'll reply back. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.